Good, warm, beautiful afternoon from your hometown station in Santa Clarita. How are you today? I hope you're doing very well. This is Dr. Judith Kurtz, and I'm the clinical sexologist and psychotherapist, and I'm sitting next to my handsome colleague, Dr. Gregory Jenkins. And we're here today for you. It's interactive. We want to answer your questions, and we have some emails from people. We certainly do. So we, uh, we're going to go over some of the emails today, and then I'm going to tell you about in our future programs, we have some doctors that are going to be guests on the show. And uh, One doctor is a doctor who actually performs the O-shot for women. Uh, that's the shot to uh, increase the vitality of the, of the female anatomy. The second one is a board-certified urologist that will talk about some prostate disease and other other illnesses uh, of the bladder. So we're, we're looking forward to those. They're going to be planned to come up, maybe one next week. So I hope so. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. I, I think what we're here to do is to give you all a great deal of information and to make your life better, healthier, just from knowledge. And please, right now, just give us a call if you want to know anything. We don't have any script or anything that we're planning to talk about. We certainly have enough to talk about, but we uh, want you to call us at 661-298-5487, 661-298-5487. Please give us a call. I mean, anything that's been bothering you about sex, about health, uh, relationship, we don't care. Just give us a call. We want to make your life better. So do you think we should uh, talk about our emails? Yeah, we have a couple emails right in front of us here. So, uh, Dr. Kurtz, why don't you take this one on top here Okay. and read it, and we'll talk about it. And just talking about the emails, and if you can't call in, and if you can't call us right now because you're picking up children or you're taking a shower, whatever, um, you can always email us at doc at hometownstation.com. And uh, here's, here is something from one of our listeners. Uh, Dear Doc and Doc, my husband of 27 years cheated on me with a close girlfriend. We divorced and he has since married her. We have four children and grandchildren. I struggle on a daily basis with my resentment of them both, but mostly of her. I can't seem to let go of this anger. I will soon have to be in a social situation with her. Can you help me with this struggle? And wow, I I can hear the pain in this. I mean, not only were you betrayed, um, listener, you were double betrayed. Um, 27 years is a long time. I love wonderful, healthy relationships and long-term relationships. Some don't make it, some do. I, I would, of course, question, did you go to therapy when this first happened? And I think people are so afraid to go to therapy. It's like something's wrong with me or there's something, well, yeah, there's something wrong in your relationship. So, If you go to therapy earlier than later, uh, sometimes you can get through this. Was this a betrayal? Absolutely. Was it painful? Yes. And it's never too late to check in with the therapist and work through this, especially now that you're going to be in a social situation with her. Uh, I can imagine how very, very difficult that's going to be. So you might want to check in with somebody so you can just get those feelings out so that uh, it's not awkward or awkward for you when you see her and to empower you. And I'm sorry you had to go through it. I, I will tell you in my practice, I've had couples who have betrayed each other and uh, we've worked through it and we've gotten them back together and they're happy and healthy and uh, They've given each other the grace of forgiveness. Um, Anyway, uh, we can't do therapy but on this show, but I would encourage you strongly to get someone to talk to about that. Not not friends or neighbors, because they love you and uh, they're going to 
tell you their opinion, but a professional that you can work with and you'll feel safe to really say anything that you want. So, okay, what do you think? Well, I think uh, on this particular situation that it comes down to when the bullet hits the bone is that when you get you get separated, you get divorced, you still have, you have kids between yourselves and eventually they'll want to get together with the new spouse or the new spouse is and you're going to have to learn how to deal with it because the kids want to see the parents and then whoever else is there. So it's going to be really hard not to go to the social function because it's going to be graduation or bar mitzvah or something and you're going to have to be there. So you're going to have to learn how to get, to get there. So maybe get started in therapy um, and, and start thinking about it so that you can have a good time and get past this painful part of your life. I love what you said, when the bullet hits the bone. I've never heard that before, and I really like it. And I, I, I think you're right on. And think about that. When the bullet hits the bone, you're in pain. It's going on. You may be traumatized, but get some help. Do it for you, not for anybody else, but for you so that you'll feel better. Right? Life is short. So I have another one here. Um, this one came in, uh, and it says... What if your sex drive is higher than your husband's? Question mark. How do you talk about that to him? Question mark. So um, what I get from this is that your your sex drive, you're the the, the woman in this in this uh, instance, it looks like, has a higher sex drive than your husband. So you're going to have to talk to them, and even if you have to get therapy, or even maybe one your husband should get some special testing to see if uh, his testosterone level is high enough make sure it doesn't have diabetes or hypertension, something. They say sometimes the penis is a, a barometer of some sorts of your health. Mm -hmm. you, you know, if you have normal erections and normal sex drive, then you're pretty healthy. But if something, uh, if, if you don't have a sex drive, then there's something wrong. And it may be medical, it may be psychological. So you really should follow up with uh, your, your one of your doctors and start working into it. I, I'm glad that you read that and took it on because that's, that is so right on. First, we have to do health, see if what's going on or uh, is it just low libido, um, which I deal with quite a bit in my office. Uh, one person has the uh, lower libido sex drive than the other one and uh, once we get the couple talking, and I always say it's not what you say that's going to hurt you, it's what you don't say. And generally when I'm doing therapy with couples, they've kept things inside that they haven't talked about to each other, and we can, we can get it out in a safe place. Uh, and it's, it's like cleaning out a cavity, I think, getting all that decay out, and then you can have a a cleaner, more fun relationship, and hopefully start having a great sex life again. Well, you know, when the urologist comes here next week, we can ask him maybe that same kind of question is about what kind of things increase or decrease libido. Uh, and we can maybe see if there's physiological issues that need to be addressed uh, as a physician. I would like to know if there's anything I'm not checking for. Sure. Because sure. I get patients come in and they are unhappy with the way their body's changing. They're unhappy with the way the sex works. Uh, and so I start working them up and start evaluating and trying to find out what it is. And many times I find out, a lot of times I don't find out though. It's uh, psychological. So then that's where Dr. Kurtz comes in. <laughs> well, y you just hit on something uh, that people are not happy with their bodies changing. And that's what our bodies do every day. They're changing. We are getting older. We can do plastic surgery, but we're still the same age. It doesn't matter. And I think we need to think about some acceptance of the aging process. We do the best we can, but you know, not to be so surface, because when we're surface in a relationship, uh, we're, we're not going to measure up with libido. We're not going to communicate. It's just about how do you look. And, you know, we all want to look good and we all want to present well, but uh, it just seems that there's quite a bit of emphasis. Does anyone agree or disagree? I mean, please give us a call and let us know if, you, if, if we're off base on something or if, uh, you know, we're right on. 
Of course, I think we're right on. What do you think? I think we are an expert. <laughs> we're Doc and Doc. In the station, we're an expert. <laughs> we are the experts yeah. here. Yeah. That's why we get paid the big bucks to be an expert. Oh, right? that's true. That, I forgot. I forgot. I'll, I'll have to think about cashing my check. That's right. <laughs> we, were, we were talking about looks, and sometimes when I've done shows before, sometimes the best show is before the show begins. That is when you're just kind of all talking around to each other. And we were having a conversation here um, with our technical guys too on internet dating and a site that just the picture comes on, and I haven't heard of this one, comes on your cell phone and you swipe it one way if you're interested or swipe it the other way if you're not. I'm having trouble getting my head around it. It's it's probably very cool, but um, I, I don't know. It's that instant gratification once again. So how do you get to know a person? And, uh, you know, you can really, you can fall in love with somebody when you get to know them a little better. And sometimes it doesn't matter about the looks, but if you're looking for that eight by 10 glossy and perfect, guess what? They're gonna get older. They may have an accident. They may, something may happen to them. So it's really good to get to know the person first before you fall in love. Yeah, you know, before the internet was such a huge thing, I went with uh, one of the guys from the hospital and he had a, a membership in some dating club. So we go down to Ventura Boulevard Tarzana area and you, they go you go back and they give you this big three ring binder of pictures so you flip through the pictures just like with uh, tinder and and then the company um, sends your or tells tells the uh, people that you chose that you that you're interested so it's much like the way uh, tinder is and you know then, then one of the ladies at my office told me says a long time ago that my 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 boyfriend or my husband i can't remember now is going to start a dating site on online i said i'm thinking to myself that's not going to work you know, <laughs> so, so don't use me for investment advice that's for sure <laughs> well and if if you decide i think that's the way people are looking for relationships is the um online dating people are busy they're going everywhere i i hate that just looks business i kind of like could i have a little bit of substance anyway um but be prepared uh don't think the first date you're going to fall in love and if you do that's absolutely wonderful and you're the luckiest person in the world but uh have you ever kissed a frog before you might want to find a frog somewhere and kiss them and see because you're going to be kissing a lot of frogs before you find the prince uh, or princess. So there are different ones, but, you know, I, I think word to the wise, you've got to be really cautious. Uh, meet them in a very public setting first, and I would just meet for coffee first, not for drinks because that will... <laughs> take something sideways and just for coffee and tell them you only have 15 minutes you know I, I, I don't have that long but because if you're thinking this big date dinner drinks dancing sex uh, you, you're really going down a path that's probably I, believe me I'm not judging it or being moral about it but it's going to cause you some unhappiness and I don't want you to be unhappy I want you to find the love of your life I think we're meant to couple I mean you know the ark where the Noah's Ark, the story mm. where he sent the animals, all the animals, two by two. So I, I think we're meant to couple. Yeah, I was uh, making a comment before the show started with, with everybody in the, in the room here that, um, you know, sometimes uh, Match.com is some kind of a dating site for, for dinner, free dinners. Uh, uh, we, we all, were, as a group, were out, and there was a woman sitting next to us in the waiting room waiting to be moved back to the tables. And somebody asked her, are you on a Match.com date? And she says, yeah, this is my 93rd of the year. This is in December. She was trying to get 100 in. She was trying to get 100 in before the end of the year because she wants to write a book. Uh, you know, so, uh, so then one of, the guys in, one of the guys in my group went over and said, hey, you want to go out? So they went out the next night. So she's at 94, just like that. 
I mean, that's a professional. And then, and then he. <laughs> a professional in, professional in the mat- biblical matcher, sense? Professional matcher. Oh, okay. Yeah. Matcher. Matcher. And got so it. I felt so sorry for the guy who was sitting there. He's got his grown kids. He was telling us he has his grown kids at home because his wife left him and he takes care of all the kids and and things like that. So you hear a lot of stories, I guess, at restaurants. Uh, <laughs> I bet you've got a bunch of them, too. I have, I have them way back there in my file, back in my Rolodex. <laughs> Do they have Rolodexes? I have one. I still oh. have mine, yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Um, we want you to call us. Anybody out there, who, and I know you have done some internet dating and some, uh, whether it's Match or uh, we were trying to think of the different ones, Tinder, I think elite, um, your time, and that's for people over fifty. Your time, I think, and uh, you told, and, me, about the, you told me about the fish one. Oh, plenty of plenty fish, of fish plenty of fish. Yeah. I think that's a free one. I'm not advertising for any of these, but you know, if if that's the way it is now, here there are a bunch of of good ones out there, and for men looking for men, there's Grinder. Um, and it, it's all out there. If you've got a computer, you've got a life. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. I, or maybe uh, not. I know there's uh, sometimes patients talk to me about they can't find a relationship. And I, and I sometimes I'll ask them, where, where are you looking? I says, well, my girlfriend and I go out and we, we try to meet people at the bar. I said, well, you know, it's probably not the very best place to meet somebody. Uh, how about, you know, whatever, you, whatever your hobby is, go to join a group that does that hobby. Or if you go to, if you go to a church, you can meet somebody at the church some, or volunteer at some agency where you'll meet people that have the same thoughts. Because it's not always easy to date people, especially if, you, if they're, you're both drunk or you're both at the bar and, you know, things sometimes don't go right at the bar. Sometimes they go, they go oddly. <laughs> But well, it sounds great at the bar, you know, because everybody's your new best friend <laughs> <laughs> until the next day. And then that's it's, right. oh, my gosh, what did I do? And you know, and that's, too, when uh, the idea of safe sex sometimes goes awry. Uh, you end up with more problems than you had when you came in. So, you know, word to the wise, um, going to look for and, and people do have trouble looking for relationships. Um, I, I hear that, too, with someone is breaking up or they're in my office thinking of a breakup or talking about I'll never meet anybody or I'll, I'll never find the right person again. So it's it's kind of sad, but how many people are in this world and how many people are online? You can. All you have to do is open your heart and open your mind. And I, one of my questions that I ask all of my patients is, Tell me what your heart looks like, not not the heart that you look at. Yeah. Um, yeah, but your emotional heart. And sometimes, you know, people will say, "Well, mine's broken," or "Mine has a metal door around it," and uh, that's something you need to work through because if you have an open heart and an open mind. You're going to meet somebody, and you're going to project that out. So we want you to call us and talk to us. We're here at KHTS 1220 on your dial. The number is 661-298-5487. And we want to hear from you, so please give us a call. Your hometown station.